What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's video we're going to be solving some really annoying problems when it comes to working in with topography, and hopefully I'm going to save you a headache and some time when it comes to creating topography in Revit. Uh, now, uh, I got the idea for working on this video uh, from this model that I have created about a month ago uh, in this video uh, that you may have seen. So uh, basically, I've shown you how to uh, adjust uh, your roads to topography and also or how to adjust your floors to topography and then also how to create topography using just just splines which you can easily set at the different levels now all of this i've done using uh, or with the help of the environment plugin uh, which is designed to help you out when it comes to working with topography and landscape in Revit. Uh, now I'm just going to be using this uh, again in order to save time and solve these uh, common issues that people have when it comes to working with topography uh, and hopefully it's going to be useful uh, to everyone watching. Uh, now if you're interested in the environment plugin I'm going to leave a link just below the video in the description so check it out if you're interested in exploring that or you can contact your uh, Autodesk uh, reseller and ask them for the plugin. Okay, so uh, without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So this is the project that I'm going to be using. Uh, you may already have seen this. As I said, this is from that previous video where I showed you how to create this topography using only splines. And then I show you how to adapt uh, this floor in order to create a road that perfectly follows that topography. So if you're interested in this, check out that video. The link will be in the description. Uh, now moving forward, let's uh, try to make it look a little bit nicer. And let's Let's say we want to add uh, some sort of a differentiation between the sidewalk and the road, uh, especially in the site plan, I would like to make it just a little bit different and I want to achieve this using a fill pattern. Uh, now uh, adding a fill pattern is fairly simple and straightforward, you simply need to well, select the element in question, in this case this is a floor, uh, go into edit type here and then go into structure, go into edit, uh, find the material here. I go into edit that and then here for this concrete material simply go to the surface patterns on the graphics tab surface patterns foreground and then let's change the foreground pattern so the color is already set up but we just need to change the pattern by clicking here and let's change it to something like crosshatch 1.5 millimeters that will be perfectly fine click ok apply ok ok again apply ok and there we go uh, now as you can see it's going to uh, grayish uh, but if we zoom in you'll see that there is a pattern but we do seem to have a problem as you can see it's kind of being cut up and it looks quite awful and the reason for that is because this uh, sidewalk and road are following the uh, following the topography as you can see you, they, it has many points where it kind of adapts to that topography now uh, if I go here into uh, visibility graphics and search for floors, uh, you'll see something that they have turned off in the previous video, and that's here, these interior edges. Now, if I turn them back on, as you can see, there is many of them, and they uh, are the ones that are basically breaking this into a lot of small pieces, and that's what, what's making this look so terrible. Uh, now, I'm just going to check that back off, just because it looks nicer without that, uh, but let's take a look at how can we solve this issue with the uh, fill pattern. Now, the logical conclusion would be to go here to the empty tab uh, and then use a filled region. Uh, now you just simply select the filled region, you set it up here. So let's see, do we have, okay, we have an ortho crosshatch. Let's go into edit just to see what we have there. Okay, let's just switch to the smaller one, click OK, apply OK. And then you can use something like a rectangle like this and then create that hatch pattern. You hit finish and there we go. We have a perfectly nice hatch pattern. Uh, now this does have a couple of issues. First, it takes a long time to adjust the boundary to this whole thing, and more complex your scene is, the more trouble you're going to have adapting. Uh, the second issue is going to be what happens when you make a change to this 
uh, four in this case. Well, then you would have to go into edit boundary and just adapt that uh, again. So it is an issue when it comes to working with topography and setting this up. Uh, now, of course, I have a solution for that in this tutorial. And uh, for that, what I'm going to be doing is selecting this. And I'm going to be using the uh, environment tab. Now here for the environment tab, we do have this option uh, of object outline. This is just one of the options for or tools for working with topography. And uh, th this will allow us to basically add a pattern on this whole uh, piece of uh, floor uh, automatically. So if I just click here, it gives it a second and then it looks like this. Uh, now the reason why it looks even worse <laughs> at the moment is because as you can see a detail item or a fill pattern has been added uh, but if I go here into edit type it does have a masking function. Now if I turn that on and hit apply this will look a lot nicer but you actually don't want to have that turned on uh, because when you have your fill pattern and the masking is turned on if I were to go here to architecture and just place any component let's let's go with something a bit simpler something that everybody has let's I don't know let's find something better let's use a simple desk so if I were to place this desk here as you can see the desk is visible but when it goes below this fill pattern is it's no longer visible uh, so that's why I like to select the fill pattern and make sure that the masking is turned off now we can see the table below, but we still see the kind of the awful fill pattern in the background. Uh, now this is an easy fix actually. You simply go here to the visibility graphics overrides. You select that, go to floors again. Let's see, floors. There we go. And then here you can simply go to patterns, override that and simply uncheck both of these. Hit OK, apply, OK. Now it looks perfect. Uh, and let's just get rid of this because we don't need it. And the second reason why uh, using this tool is uh, a lot better in time saving is because now if I select that floor, so we're back to floor, if I go here into edit boundary and decide to, well, make this a bit wider here, just like that, and then hit finish, uh, it's going to give me a little pop up. Uh, from the environment plugin. It's going to say uh, modify length floor uh, filled region. So it says it's noticed that the floor has now changed its boundary. So would we like to update the filled region as well? Naturally, I'm just going to say yes, I want that. And now if we zoom in, as you can see, it has been adapted, which is really, really good. Uh, so that is a very quick solution to a fairly complex problem. Now, moving forward, let's take a look at a, another problem that I have been having. And for that, we'll have to create a section through this. So uh, let's go to the quick access toolbar and select the section tool. Uh, go from the top all the way down to the bottom. Maybe move it forward a little bit. Perfect. And then I'm just going to double click on the section head to open that section up. Uh, now, before we do anything, uh, let's just get rid of these ugly lines by going to visibility graphics overrides, scrolling down to the floors, which I never seem to find, and then just uncheck interior edges. Hit apply. Okay, perfect. Now, what's the problem here? Well, uh, when I go here to the annotate tab and want to use a spot elevation, if I zoom in and I want to place it here where it's going to cut in through the model, let's maybe turn the the tick lines on. Uh, so as you can see, it's not going to allow me to snap to that cut of the section. Now, if I go here to the house, it works perfectly fine. If I go to the level, it works as well. So as long as it has some sort of a host, it's going to work. Uh, but here on the cut, uh, Revit doesn't recognize that little cut line as a host, so it's not going to allow me to host it there. Uh, now, an obvious solution for this would be to simply go here to the uh, detail line and then create a detail line through this. Now, the problem is you can't even snap the detail line to the actual cut so even if I were to try to do it it's really hard to get it to go through the same place and then also again the same pro issue is the the last time if I go here into edit surface and decide to uh, make any sort of change here if I change it like this hit finish as you can see this uh, detail line now doesn't follow that change so let me go back a few steps get rid of these 
detail lines. There we go, I think that's it. And let me show you a, a solution that's going to allow us to place the detail line automatically and keep it there if, in, in case of any change. Uh, for that, again, uh, I'm just going to select the topography this time, go to the Environment tab, and for that we have a different tool called Surface Profile. So you basically just click on that tool, it gives you a little prompt asking you which line style would you like to use, basically choosing the line style that's going to be applied on this section cut here. So you can choose whatever you want. I prefer wide lines because this is well already a wide line so it makes sense to use it. Click OK. And now if you zoom in here as you can see we have a wide line that perfectly follows the contour of this cut. And then if I go here to the empty tab, uh, go to our spot elevation if I want to host it anywhere. As you can see it's going to go and snap right there in place. I can place it here, I can place it, let's see, here we already have some lines below so it's a bit tricky, there we go, uh, but uh, as we have created it like this, now if I go here into edit topography and decide to make a change here, any type of change, as you can see that line will automatically follow that change. So that detail line will follow that change, which is quite, quite cool. So there we go. That's a, an easy and efficient way to, uh, to solve an issue if you want to add a dimension to your, uh, to your cut line here in the section, which is something that you uh, might have to do quite often if you, were to, if you work with landscape. Uh, now moving forward, uh, let's take a, uh, take a look at, a, at another issue and for that let's go to the site plan and this one has to do with Revit ramps. So if I go here to the architecture tab, go into the ramp tool and let's create just a simple ramp, maybe an L-shaped ramp like this and then let's have another segment like that, perfect. Uh, now, if I hit finish, it's going to look like this. Oops, I forgot to turn off the railings, so let's just get rid of these easily like that. There we go. Okay, so uh, when you create this uh, ramp, uh, the only indication that you have of uh, the direction is this down or DN. Now, this is actually placed on the top of this ramp, which Basically, a rabbit is indicating that here you start if you go down, which in my opinion is counterintuitive because this is up and this is down, but you get the idea. So anyways, it's a very bad solution to an issue. So here you can go to the graphics tab and just uncheck all of these labels because it's better to have nothing than, than to have this. Uh, now you might be thinking, well, that's okay, we can just go here to the Annotate tab and then use uh, some sort of a uh, spot slope. Yeah, good luck with that. It's not going to allow you to host it on this ramp. Why? I have no idea, but Revit simply does not allow, allow you to do that. So we're stuck with an issue where it doesn't allow us to do to basically indicate which direction this ramp is heading in. Now if we were working with stairs, so if I just go here and add a simple stair like that, uh, as you can see the stair already has this arrow pointing down so it's a lot more intuitive than, than this thing. Uh, and then you can just use the tab key in order to select the arrow itself. I think you can move it around, yeah. Uh, and also you can go here into edit type and make it a full step arrow which is which is quite useful. So if I hit apply, it's going to look like that. So it's much nicer and a much nicer solution than the, the ramp one. So let me just get rid of that stair and then let's uh, find a solution for this. Well, a solution for that would be to use, go here to the annotation and then use detail lines. Uh, now it would take quite a long time to have to model each one of these. And then again, if you make any change to the to the ramp, well, that just stays where you originally placed it. So it is a solution, but probably a bad one. Now, luckily, uh, again, using the environment uh, tool set, here we have the ramp arrow tool, uh, which does allow us to solve this issue. So you simply, uh, you can select the ramp, go to the environment tab and go to ramp arrow. 
and uh, what that's going to allow you to do is to select that ramp and as you can see it's going to give us a couple of arrows now you can actually customize this so if I go here to presentation open up the drop menu and go to ramp arrow settings here I can customize that so first I can uh, go here to show arrows before landing so that means that you'll have only an arrow on the final like segment and uh, I don't want that I like to have arrows on each segment showing the uh, showing the direction also here you can play around with the size this is now two meters so you can either keep it like this uh, going to uh, two meters down and here it says extend to boundary basically means that the arrow will go up to boundary but you can uncheck that and then you can specify an angle like this like 30 degrees and have this one meter and then hit apply and then that would look like this so you can play around with that let's open up the presentation and then ramp arrow settings again uh, let's go back here I actually prefer this to be extend to boundary and have it at two meters and also you can go here to medium lines and then change that to something different like this red dashed line and then hit apply there we go now it's a red dashed line which can be useful uh, now uh, having this arrow is quite cool uh, but it actually gets cooler than that <laughs> if you go here in the 3d view you can see that the arrow is still visible which is cool on its own but that means that this arrow can actually host additional annotation so if i go back to the site plan and then go to the annotate tab go to spot uh, uh, slope elevation here i can use that to add an actual slope inside or on this ramp now of course you can change this uh, change the units like to something like degrees there we go decimal degrees apply okay yeah much better uh, so uh, you can actually add these on your uh, okay there we go so you can actually add these on your ramps and actually hose them on these arrows which is uh, another really cool uh, and easy problem solved uh, when it comes to working with ramps in Revit so there you go that's uh, those are the tips that they had uh, prepared for you today I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope I have solved some issues when it comes to working with topography in Revit everybody knows that working in topography uh, in Revit is can be quite difficult and annoying well I hope I have made it just a little bit easier uh, now if you're interested in more tutorials like this tell me in the comment section below make sure to subscribe and like and share this video and I'll be back with another tutorial in a couple of days thanks for watching and have a nice day